Good morning, Secondary 3 History students. I'm Mr. Xiao, and today I'm teaching the skill on evaluation or assertion. Before I proceed, please make sure that you have this uh, worksheet with you. And if at any point you need to speed up, slow down, or pause the video to better suit your learning speed, please do so. So let's begin. Evaluation uh, or assertion is about categorizing the sources in a source-based case study based on what they say on an assertion and then using those sources to craft arguments for and against the assertion. So the evaluation skill requires you to use multiple sources. Typically, you should use, uh, you should at least look at all the sources and pick out at least four, four sources to use. What is an assertion? An assertion is a statement about the world. There are many assertions that you make in daily life. It could be a factual assertion, like the sun will rise today, or it could be an assertion about your own preferences and predilections. For example, you say, I like ice cream. That's an assertion. An assertion is a statement about the world. You, as you can see, these assertions, the factual one or the personal one, these are not very contentious. These are quite one-sided. However, in the source-based case studies that we do as history and social studies students, we typically look at assertions that can encompass and include multiple perspectives. So please take notes of this. The assertions we look at and B can have multiple perspectives. And so are many sided, two sided, let's say, multiple sided. If we look at two sided assertions, we need to evaluate this assertion by considering arguments on both sides. So there would be arguments that agree with the assertion, say that the assertion is true, and there'll be arguments that disagree with the assertion and say the assertion is false. This is still quite theoretical. Um, so we are going to go and look at uh, a practice example very soon. For now, the three steps I want you to keep in mind when we do the evaluation skill, when we evaluate the assertion, is first, we must understand the assertion. Second, we will categorize the sources. And finally, we use those sources to craft arguments for and against the assertion yes and no, support and oppose, true or false. So let's begin by looking at this assertion in 1E. This is chapter 4, uh, the outbreak of World War II. And the assertion here we are looking at today, Nazi Germany was to blame for the outbreak of World War II. Now, as a good history student, you naturally already have some contextual knowledge about this. Chapter 4 was all about the three big reasons for the outbreak of World War II. One is uh, the failure of the League of Nations. Two is Nazi Germany's expansionist policy. And three is the appeasement policy of the Allies. So already in your head, you have some ideas of what arguments can be made for and against this assertion. In a source-based case study, this contextual knowledge is helpful because it will help you quickly identify which sources are arguing for and against, which sources are agree sources, which sources are disagree sources. So let's first replicate this assertion in this table. We have replicated this assertion, Nazi Germany was to blame. And we are going, we have done step one. And now we are going to do step two to categorize every source based on their stand. Does this source agree or disagree that Nazi Germany was to blame? Our goal is to find at least two sources on both sides of the divide. So without further ado, can we flip to page three? Germany's expansionist policies. The outbreak of World War II begins with the German invasion of Poland, but this was only the latest of many German aggressions and transgressions which broke international law. So on one hand, we have Germany's illegal aggressions as the, the reason for the war. But on the other hand, we have the Allies' policy of appeasement. 
already the background information, uh, the source-based case study is setting up two sides to this assertion, two sides, multiple perspectives. Was it Germany's fault? Was it the Allies' fault? Can you see that? Now, I would like you to pause the video and take about 10 minutes to read all the sources and identify if the source is an agree source or disagree source. To make things easier, I'm going to park the assertion right here. And again, our goal is to categorize every source as agree or disagree. So at this point, please pause the video and go ahead and categorize. And I hope you have done so. So let's look at source A. Source A is uh, remarks by Adolf Hitler to uh, the Austrian leader. And Hitler says, well, Italy and France, they are doing nothing. They are doing nothing. So this looks a bit like the appeasement, right? Appeasement. Allies appeasement. So if it's allies appeasement, this would be clearly a disagree source. So for source A, we would say it's a disagree source. Now let's look at source B. Very short, very simple. The giant soldier. British Empire is saying to France, why should we take a stand when it's so far away? Um, <laughs> it's the same thing, right? Source B is also a disagree source because the Allies are not not doing anything. See, they're not taking a stand. They are falling along the other countries. So source B is also a disagree source. As we categorize, you can go back to the first page, the source categorization table, and we can start putting, parking in our findings. Source A, source B are disagree sources. Disagree. Okay, let's keep going. Source C, a speech by Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler, what does it say? Um, when I cross into Austria, I have, get, I have gotten a stream of love. So is Nazi Germany responsible for World War II? No. No. Not Nazi Germany's fault. As it was welcomed by other countries. The fact that Germany is being welcomed and being loved, being loved by other countries means that, you know, Germany was not even, a, not aggressive, not causing trouble. That means the war is someone else's fault. It's not Germany's fault. Um, but of course, it's a speech by Adolf Hitler. And then the next thing you want to ask is, is this reliable? And this question would be a bonus mark. This question, this idea about is the source reliable, it's a bonus mark. I'll show you how that works shortly. We continue categorizing first, yeah? Source D, Winston Churchill, a British member of parliament, he was criticizing the Munich agreement. The German dictator. So here, here you see a bit of a difference, right? We see the other side of things now. It's no longer a disagree source. It is an agree source. Why is it Nazi Germany's fault? Because the, uh, Hitler has been demanding territory illegally and breaking his agreements, right? He's demanding the territory. He's breaking his agreements. Okay, so it's Nazi Germany's fault. Nazi Germany is to blame. 
source E. Wow, this is so clear. Um, again, it's it's hitless fault. Hitless fault, yeah. Maybe we change to invading other countries. So this one would be. Breaking international agreements and causing suspicion and fear. Okay, so source E is Nazi Germany's fault, definitely, unquestionably in the wrong, because he has destroyed the agreement and he violated the agreement and no one trusts Hitler. Okay, what about this? Source F, rendezvous. Um, source F. Source F is interesting. It's about Hitler and the Soviet Union. And they are meeting over the corpse of Poland. And source F is what we call a two-sided source. Source F is a two-sided source. What does that mean? It means that source F both agrees and disagrees. Can you pause the video if you need to? And think about in what way Source F agrees that World War II is Nazi Germany's fault, and in what way Source F disagrees that World War II is Nazi Germany's fault. It agrees, right? Because um, Hitler has invaded Poland and sparked World War II. Right? Nazi Germany's fault because Hitler has invaded Poland and sparked World War II. But this agrees because the USSR empowered and encouraged Hitler to attack Poland. So source F is an interesting two-sided source. Hitler is to blame for attacking Poland, but the USSR and Stalin are also to blame for encouraging Hitler. So what is the conclusion? Let's go back to our first page. Disagree sources we have what A, B, C, and F. Agree sources we have D, E, and F. Do we have at least two sources in both agree and disagree? Yes. Yes. And looking at the spread of sources, you realize that you want to be strategic because there are more disagree sources than agree sources. When we are writing and crafting the arguments, you would want to use source F as an agree source so that you can have a balanced coverage of both sides of the argument. You want balanced use of sources because that achieves the highest level for this question before the bonuses, before the bonuses. We have done step one, understand the assertion. Step two, categorize every source. And now we will do step three. Crafting arguments. How do we answer the question? How do we craft arguments? Let's go to page two. The assertion, Nazi Germany was to blame for the outbreak of World War II. How do we answer this question? The question is, how far do the sources agree? How far do the sources agree? In other words, notice that your ATQ will be from the sources. Source A agrees or disagrees, source B agrees, or disagrees, source C agrees, or disagrees, and so on, and so on. Well, source A is a disagree source. We have figured that out. So let's look at how this question works. How would we un write, write this answer? It would be, source A, we start with ATQ, disagrees with the statement that Nazi Germany was to blame because it was the allies such as Britain and France that did not seize opportunities to stop Germany from expanding, which made Germany stronger and led to World War II. This is evident from source A, which says England, England will not lift a finger for Austria and France, but for France, it's too late. France did nothing. 
can you see that? We use the source, we figure out agree or disagree, in this case disagree. Then we draw the inference from the source, why disagree? Why is it Nazi Germany's fault? Because it's the Allies' fault for not stopping Germany, which made Germany stronger. And we give the evidence. This is how to do the evaluation question in a nutshell. And this is the argument for one source. Whenever we do this 8 mark question, we need a minimum of 4 sources. 2 agree and 2 disagree. In other words, you will be writing minimally 4 paragraphs. 4 paragraphs. Agree, disagree, agree, disagree. And you can choose which source you want to use. You can choose which source you want to use. The three steps are understand the assertion, categorize the sources, and then use the sources to craft the arguments agree, disagree, agree, disagree. Why must we have a balanced use of sources? Because in the marking scheme, L2 is one side, agree or disagree, and L3 is both sides, agree and disagree. So just by writing one agree and one disagree paragraph, just by writing two, two arguments, you achieve L3. But we must use four because, firstly, that achieves higher credit, more marks. And secondly, if any of your arguments are rejected, you don't fall straight back into L2. If you have two arguments on both sides and one is rejected, at least you still have both sides represented. And that's what we need for evaluation. Okay, I'm going to go through the rest very swiftly. Source B, we looked at it and we said, well, it's a disagree source because of the allies' inaction and irresponsibility. So how can we write this? Source B disagrees that Nazi Germany was to blame because it was the, we said what, the allies in action and refusal to take concrete uh, and, and firm actions to stop Hitler that allowed the rest of Europe to fall under a lot much of Europe to fall under German domination and eventually lead to a world war. Right? So, so many of European countries, Austria, so on, they are falling. They are falling like dominoes. They are falling under literally, right? Falling under German domination. Can you see that? They are falling under German domination and because Germany is dominating everything, um, it triggered retaliation. It led to the World War. So this is a disagree paragraph as well. What about source C? Well, source C is also a disagree paragraph. So for the first three sources we practice, they are all disagree paragraphs. Source C is the speech by Adolf Hitler. He said that he's, you know, everyone loves him. He has such a stream of love, not as tyrants, but as liberators. And we ask, can we trust this? That will be the bonus. I'll get to bonus in a bit. So source C, we said, is a disagree source. And disagree why? Disagree why? Disagree because because Nazi Germany is not an aggressor that is bullying other countries, but instead is welcome with joy and and joy and longing as a savior. Thus, the German expansion was legitimate and rightful 
and the war started due to other countries refusal to accept this this much supported German expansion. So the idea here is that you know Germany expanding was right and other countries didn't want to accept it. So these three boxes, ATQ, inference, explanation, and evidence, is the paragraph, right? So in other words, what have we what do we have so far? In our answer we would have something like this. Okay. We would have source A. Source B. And source C. So at this point, we have three paragraphs. I hope it's quite clear what we have just done. We have three paragraphs. Okay, so first thing I want you to do is copy these paragraphs on full scale. So copy the questions and these answers on full scale. The question is, um, So please copy this question and the answers on full scale. But more than that, there's something missing. What is missing? Notice that we have only done this agree so far, which means that by the marking scheme, we are only at L2. We are only at L2, which means I want you to also write out two paragraphs for agree. You can choose sources D, E, or F. I want you to write two agree paragraphs on top of these three disagree paragraphs. So we need to continue. Let's say source D agrees. And you need to continue. So do that on your own. That is homework. And in fact, you have already gotten help from me in this video. So go back to the uh, the previous parts if you need to see what, what we highlighted, why we said that sources D, E, and F agree with the statement that it is indeed Nazi Germany's fault that World War II started. Um, and go and craft your paragraphs, the agree paragraphs. That is homework. So now I've also done agree. Okay. I, I have done L2, L3, but there is this plus one. What is plus one? Plus one is bonus. Bonus comes about by using contextual knowledge, reliability, or utility. Of these three tools, I have already taught you reliability and you have your own contextual knowledge. Utility comes in in SEC4. Don't worry about it yet. You will know when you reach SEC4. So how do we do the bonus? This is the key. When we see a paragraph like this, uh, let's say in this source C about the orange loose, and in your head, suddenly all sorts of information is flying in. You suddenly have so much you want to share about it as well. You can use your knowledge to 
deepen the argument. What does that mean? In this case, we say Saucy disagrees that Nazi Germany was to blame because Nazi Germany was welcomed with joy by Austria. Right, by Austria. And suddenly you wanted to share some extra stuff you know about Anschluss. So you can share it. Furthermore, what do you know? Anschluss was supported by 99.7% of the Austrian citizens, which shows that Germany's actions were indeed popular and supported, and thus Germany was welcome and not to blame for the outbreak of World War II. This extra knowledge that you are adding to the argument is a plus one. It's a plus one. So I want you for Saucy to also copy this contextual knowledge in. And there is a second plus one I want to show you, which is the reliability method. The reliability method. Remember, we looked at this source. It's the speech by Hitler. And the first thing that strikes you is, yeah, Hitler saying that everyone loves Hitler. Do we trust it? Maybe not. The speech is, the source is a speech by Hitler who is expected to justify his decision. Justify meaning explain and say that his decision is correct. Why? Because his decision broke the Treaty of Versailles. Hitler would have wanted to convince the countries, other countries, that the Austrians support this illegal expansion so that the other countries won't make trouble and stop Hitler. Which means Hitler has an agenda, a political agenda. He's biased. He wants to achieve domination of Austria peacefully, without any trouble, without people stopping him. And so this speech is unreliable. We can't use this source to explain that Germany is not to blame. It's unreliable. This is another bonus point. This is a second bonus mark. A second bonus mark. So, I think you will realize at this point that even just doing a single 8 mark question requires quite a bit of writing and thinking. Um, but it's important that we learn this now so that we will have robust and skillful methods of addressing the 8 mark evaluation question when we see it in an assessment, in an exam, in a test. I hope this video has been helpful. Evaluation is really about grappling with a single assertion statement using all the sources in the case study. The three steps uh, you would do are understand the assertion, categorize the sources, agree or disagree, and then you craft the arguments supporting and opposing the assertion. And your work, again, please do this in class or at home. Copy this question. Copy the answers for source A, B, and C. The C answer, copy all the bonuses as well, the full one. Copy these three paragraphs on full scale and proceed to do two more agree paragraphs using D, E, or F. Again, copy the question, copy these three paragraphs, and proceed to do two more agree paragraphs. Okay, that's my lesson on evaluation skill. Uh, I hope it was fruitful, and all the best in your revision for the future exams.